good afternoon um welcome to gsp 1201 slash 2201 that is the use of english for the group g that is the group which comprise of the student from the departments of anatomy physiology and pharmacy or rather the program BA, bsc anatomy bsc physiology and bpam um my name is mohammed maikari i will be the facilitator for the course throughout this semester um a gsp use of english the gsp to one use of english um, is meant to acquaint the student with the basic of the English language and literature. Um, things like uh, basic grammar, vocabulary development, the spoken English, the literature, and language, summary and comprehension are discussed in modules. Um, the first module, which I'm going to present now, consists of the boca issue of vocabulary development, um, which, in other way, comprise of things like denotation and connotation, idioms, phrasal verbs, and what have you. As we go through the slides, I will be discussing with you, and at the end of the discussion, we may have uh, time to ask questions, make comments, and observation. Thank you. Module 1, as I have said, vocabulary development. The main object of this course is to prepare the student mind on the need and for the way of, de of developing their vocabularies. With a special ingredient for spoken and written communication, the following item will be discussed in this module. Denotation and connotation, register and jargons, present verbs and idioms. Okay, as I have said, there are ways in which meaning of the word, meaning of the word, will be understood, or the way through which one can get the meaning of the word. That is to infer what the word stands for and what the word serves in a particular text. He said, uh, one of the commonest way of getting the meaning of the word is through conversion dictionary. However, dictionary provides meaning, uh, uh, sometimes with example and even the etymology of the words. However, converting dictionary should always be the last resort for a good learner of language. That is, it is dictionary is only converted when all the other avenues fail to provide the desired meaning or fail to provide the desired what, uh, sense of the words to the learner. In this way, he said, the dictionary should be converted as a last resort. That is, there are ways besides converting dictionary which provide the meaning of the word or which rather provide the desired meaning. Some of these ways are discussed below. Number one, the dictionary may contain what is called the etymology. By etymology, we mean the origin, the root of the word, where the word is. Uh, sometimes, technically, it refers to even the history of the word. And the root of this word, is it the word that originated from the English language? Is it a Latin borrowing? And what have you? 
um, and another way is the what we call the sound words or onomatopoeic words, words. By this we mean how the sound relates to meaning. For example, take the word like whisper, rustling, whistling, and tick tock. Kuko, as in the cock of the, uh, the crow of the cow, meow of the cat, and what have you. These are called sound words or words or onomatopoeic words from the word onomatopoeia. Another way of looking at that meaning is root and base of the words. We can say for sure, for example, that after we attach what is called a lexical formative or what we call a suffix in most cases or a prefix in English, generally an affix. That's what we call a root and the base of the words. That is, a word has a basic distinct a basic unit which cannot be further broken down into meaningful units so the third type of meaning or the number three type of meaning or the type of word is that is that of root and base of the word that is for example the word act is a root word which can be suffixed by the word i b e this act can stand alone and it is a verb as you understand but I, B, E, which can be attached to it, is called a bound morphine. That is, a morphine that cannot stand alone. And this way you have what like active. And again, from this act, you can generate what like acto by attaching O, R, for example. And again, we need to distinguish between the word root and the base. What do you mean by the word base? The base is a word that is given, which is not necessarily a root. A root is a unit which cannot be further broken down. While the base is how the word is given. I have just mentioned act, which is a root and cannot be further broken down. And we still have the word active as its base. Active is a base. Why do you call it base? From it we can generate activity. Again, I can cite edu, educate. Educate is a root, but education is derived from the word educate. And we can go further to say from education, which can be a best, we can have educational, for example. Have this clear? Then another word is another type of word. Is what we call learn words or borrowed words in some context. Words are borrowed from the another language, from the lexical uh, uh, pool of another language as a result of contact or as a result of development, technological development. For example, we have example abound, we have, for example, safari from the, borrowed from the Arabic, kubdita from the French. Wagon from the German, cartoon from Italian, and many other words. Okay, then another important aspect of the mean of words, or another important aspect of word category, is that of what we call grammatical category of the words. Knowing the word class helps to understand the meaning of a word. For instance, knowing that a given word is an action word, that is a verb, and not a noun, as let the possible understanding of the word meaning. That is when you find it in context. As I've just mentioned, what is this context? Context refers to the environment or the surrounding or the circumstance in which a word is used. By environment, we mean the type of words, for example, that accompany the particular word that you are in trouble with or that you fail to understand. For example, when you have a word followed by the word berry, 
there's likelihood that this word is what? An adjective. Very good. Very far. Very wrong. And what have you? For example, words that are qualified, words that normally ends with ly in English are said to be, in most cases, adjective, adverbial. For example, quickly, orderly, smartly, and what have you. And again, the context refers to the type of area of human activity, the domain of human use of the language. It's also a determinant factor in understanding the meaning of the words. For example, that's what you call language legalist, language medicalist. There are type of words that have meaning as they are used in medical profession. Sometimes journalists, language journalists. So we call this register, but sometimes the way we see words and the context in which it is used, if the word is used in hospital-oriented context, we can easily what the cheaper meaning. And again, native speaker is blessed with intuition. What is meant by intuition? That is the natural instinct, that is a competence that we have to what think and assign this thing according to maybe judging from our experience or our understanding and experience of a language. And normally through reading with we, or as a second language users, we are exposed to this through extensive reading and exposure to other texts in that particular language. As we have mentioned, the dictionary is a last resort. The dictionary is always the last thing that one can go to find meaning. That is after exhausting all the all the avenues for one to get the meaning of then we conduct a dictionary because dictionary improves our learning but not as much as the other activities mentioned or other distinct mentioned denotation and connotation by denotation and connotation we mean the, lit the literal, that is, the dictionary meaning and the non-dictionary meaning. Connotations, denotations refers to the meaning, the literal meaning, the basic meaning, the meaning that is commonplace meaning, what is known. When I say A, I mean A. And connotation means the extra meaning, the figurative sense of meaning. That is, a meaning that the word can take, which is not its primary non-meaning. The word can have a denotation and connotation sense. That is, for example, if I use the word lion, I mean a four-legged animal. This is the denotation of the word lion. And what of the connotation? It, the word lion connotes an, a strong woman. A person who is strong can be peerless, who, someone who is peerless, brave, can be described as lion. This is called connotation. That is what the word connotes. Taking a figurative meaning beyond the surface understanding of the first timer to this language. That is, someone who understands the language as a basic, uh, the basic level will see the meaning of lion as just the animal we refer to earlier. That is, a poor leg animal, but Talking of the connotation, the word lion may connote bravery, that is being strong, or being peerless, or even a king, that is a leader, and what have you, depending on the culture and the environment in which we speak. Mm. So, as we have said, meaning can, have, can be literal or figurative. That is, a word can be given a meaning by associating it to, or it can be, the meaning can be given by a, a word can have a meaning from its primary reference that is what it will pass into the in the physical world 
when we talk of a what is the meaning of the word a in the world what is what the what a small boy of say three or four years will understand from the meaning of the word dog and then what do you mean by a dog we mean maybe, maybe a person who is uh, acting as what and as a someone agent or a kind of a person who is a promiscuous that is promiscuous person or maybe someone who is a, a kind of what played a role of being undertaker that is who is a someone um, a kind of a slave and what have you can describe as this that is a, a, um, as a connotation of the word dog then In understanding the two concepts of denotation and connotation, we can highlight the similarities and difference in their features. Number one, both denotative and connotative meanings are types of meanings available to every language users. That is, all language users, in as much as they have a kind level, a, a, some level of speciality in the language, have both the denotative and the connotative meaning of that, of, uh, of, uh, as it is used in that language. <coughs> Number two, denotative meaning identifies item in the world that is the primary reference of these words. For example, donkey, we say an animal. But the same meaning of the word donkey can be extended to human behavior to mean what? A stupid person, a workaholic, and what have you. Number three, denotative meaning is stable relationship. In denotative meaning, there is this stable relationship. For example, a word car remains that same item, a real life which has four wheels. While in quantitative meaning, there's no stability of meaning. Speaker's experience, culture, and um, environment maybe determine sometimes the connotative meaning. And which can change over time. All like denotative, which is always what suitable, denotative, connotative meaning can change according to time and environment. And even the culture of the speakers and the hearer and the environment. In denotative meaning, meaning is concrete, while quantitative meaning is abstract. That is, denotative meaning are those meaning that we can see, one thing is when they refer to an, an, uh, something, it's something that we can see, or we feel, or we touch, or identify in this physical world. Whereas connotation, that is quantitative meaning of item, cannot be seen or touched or identified. Instead, we extend the meaning, that is, because if, for example, you said, he is a donkey, we can see a donkey, we see a donkey is not human. If we talk of donkey, in, don in quantitative form, we can touch and see the donkey. But repairing one to being a donkey is not something that we will see in his, maybe in his um, outlook, except maybe in his attitude, which resembles something closer to that of a donkey. Okay. Again, number five, which is the last, denotative meaning. In denotative meaning, a word may denote an item or entity with different sets of meaning. For example, the word teacher has different sets of meaning. We can be a tutor, a facilitator, a lecturer, or a kind of an instructor. Whereas in, quantit whereas in quantitation, we associate, me we associate meaning with other abstract nature, that is the behavior, event, idea, or feeling. It is, however, important to know what which has different of meaning, shades of meaning also bring about the incidences of synonyms in language. Thus, connotative meanings yield synonyms. For example, Star, orange, rancid, we say butter, blonde to mean hair, and brown to mean dress, deep to mean gutter, profound to mean 
one bright student and colorful attire. We can talk of saw orange, rancid butter, blonde hair, brown dress, deep grotcha, profound wound, bright student and colorful attire. And for example, statement and politician. Statesman means a retired maybe someone who is elderly, who is mature, who is patriotic in his attitude. Why politician? They have a kind of what? A connotative sense of being what? Corrupt and maybe dishonest. Lecturer, for example, a teacher and teacher. Maybe this is lecturer in tertiary institution and teacher, maybe primary or secondary school teacher. It is also important to note that literary writing are known for the propitious Propious use of connotative meanings, as seen in the literary device set as metaphor, irony, satire, imagery. Example: bats connotes blindness. Connotations carries negative and positive meaning. Meaning some synonyms deeper in either the, the negative or positive implication of the word. A word may be positive to A but negative to B. For example, childlike, childlike can be positive to young children or negative to adults. And youthful, it can be positive in some sense and some sense of pending. Statement is positive, while politician can be negative depending on the cultural perception. Liberty, which is positive generally, but freedom can be positive to South Africans, but negative to Americans, for example. Okay, the last, um, the next aspect is registers and jargons. What are registers and what are jargons? Generally speaking, formality Formality is the only difference between registers and jargons. A language or a domain specific language that is a kind of a technical vocabulary which is used in a particular profession, threat or activity is said to be registered. Why? An obscure court a word, a term, a press, a linguistic code of whatever nature, which is used in an informal setting among a group of people, is called jargons. Jargon. By this we mean jargon and registers are language, a language linguistic entity or linguistic codes that are peculiar to specific set of people or a group of human beings we are, which are engaged in or which share certain commonality. Register refers to technical vocabulary of a profession, threat or activity. Example, we know there's a register in legal discipline or a law, generally speaking, the area of law. Equally in medicine, in linguistics, tourism, football, etc. This professional use of language is what we call register. Register, as I have said, work like a professional court. It is normally used exclusively by the members of a particular group or particular particular pair of human endeavor. Use of register make communication specific that is discipline specific 
precise and accurate. And it also promotes economy in communication. What do you mean by economy in communication? We mean there is an avoidance of tautology and unnecessary repetitions. We can cite some examples of professional registers. Like in the discipline of law, we have brought like plenty, prosecutor, writ, dependent, applant, mandamus, accused, and petitioner. In linguistics, we have brought like phoneme, allophone, plosive, rounded bore, alomo, syllabic, and consonant. In politics, we have what like controversy, eloquent, declare, candidate, strategy, bunk, canvas, battle, adverse, jubilant, gracious, and charisma. In the area of religion, we have what like blasphemy, animism, Buddhism, agnosticism, atheism. Ecclesiastic, Episcopal, Evangelical, Economical, Eucharist, and Hearsay. In medicine, we have like acute, abrasion, abscess, autopsy, biopsy, diagnosis, edema, fracture, malignant, and benign. Okay, then what is this jargon? What are these jargons? As I've said, jargon are a kind of linguistic code which is used by a particular group of people with a kind of a peculiar meaning, which is not used, the meaning is not used beyond this group of people. As I've said, it is said it's an obscure and pretentious use of language. It sometimes entails the use of long and pompous words which are often unnecessary and inappropriate. To test if an expression is jargon, we ask this question. Can it be said in simple words without impending the speaker intent? If the answer is yes, if the answer is yes, it is a jargon. If the answer is no, it is not. It is a register. So jargon, if you like, is that kind of pretension can be seen as this pretentious language, a kind of what pompous language. Which is sometimes used to what impress and or to intimidate the listener or to hide the real meaning of what is said from the listener. Okay. The next is prosal verbs. What is a prosal verb? Is a combination, present verb is a combination of the word press and verb. By this we mean a verb which exists or which is put in a press, that is having two parts. As it is said that a group of words which consists of a verb and a particle is called a present verb. In other words, this particle is either a preposition or an adverb or a combination of two. That is, a preposition and an adverb and another adverb or a combination or it can be a preposition or an adverb or combination of preposition and adverb. So, 
the appraisal verb can have the structure of verb and particle. For example, call of, call of. And this particle can be preposition, as I have said. For example, where you have preposition, you have call of. That is a verb and preposition. You can have a verb and adverb. For example, at of, at a verb, of an adverb. You can have a combination of two, that is a verb, adverb, and preposition. Say, catch off with. Put up with. This is an example of verb, catch, adverb, of, with, preposition. Also, there is a corresponding radical verb for every present verb, which means the same as the present verb. For example, a, that is what we are saying is that each and every present verb have a kind of a meaning that is a verb with a meaning with a, with a lexical verb can convey. For example, look for means to search, put up means to extinguish, object to to reject or to refuse, bring up to rest. Okay. The division in present verb. We said present verb are generally divided into two four. We have what we call separable and non-separable present verbs. But separable present verbs, we mean those flexible present verbs that allows for the insertion that is a kind of an intrusion of a part of a an object between the price and the, between the verb and the particle. For example, let's take the word break down. We can say break the topic down. Break it down. That is the subject. You have break down, break down the verb down the particle. Then we allow for the insertion of a particle of the object of this uh, present verb break down the topic. We say break the topic down. Bring up, bring a child up. Call up the strike. Call the strike up. Put the fire up. Put up the fire. And again, we have another category. Of those brother verb that is the non separate a kind of a rigid brother verb which do not allow for the insertion of an object between the verb and the particle. Remember, we said the particle can be a, an adverb or preposition or the combination of two. For example, talk we can talk of look for, which is to search, hold on, to wait, stop by, to stop. Hang out, sit up. All these do not. Still on present verb, we said, for example, if we said, for example, put up, for example, to accommodate, to tolerate, the meaning is what? Not literal, because we cannot take the meaning of this individual word from the meaning of the constraint word. But we'll talk of what like look down. Pay up and what have you. They have what? A kind of what? Non it's a kind of a literal meaning. That is their meaning is clear, is there on the space for the reader to see. Pay, look down and what have you. Then the idioms. A commonplace definition of idiom is a group of words whose meaning cannot be predicted by the sequence of what in the structure. This group of words, words, group of words, please take note of this correction, which cannot be predicted by the sequence of words in the structure. This means that idioms are opaque and in nature. This group of words for slice over time to form a union 
form a unit of meaning. Therefore, it they involves they involve the kind they involve the kind of what collocation that is by the nature of the company of the company of the other words that are used together with them we can talk of what the idiom we said idiom becomes a kind of what as an established words or established has a kind of an established press in which they are used Take example, he kicked the bucket. Not he played the bucket. That is mean to mean he died. For to beat around the bush. Hit the sack. Up in arm. Scrap the barrel, blow hot and cold, except to cut corners, boil the ocean and water. Okay, as we have mentioned, idioms are said to be semantically like a single word, but do not function like a word. That is, you do not think, you do not take or take grammatical features like noun word, text plural form, or Having a verb form taking what tenses form that is a past or past um, um, a present form or whatever. So the present verb no, for the idiom to kick the bucket cannot be what cannot be pluralized to be to say what as to kick the bucket no or to spill the beans is a wrong form to spill the beans for example and again we said. In comparison, these idioms do not have what can be rendered in passive, that is, they can be transformed to passive form. Therefore, for example, we can say we can say the bucket was kicked instead he kicked the bucket the way it is. So this is a peculiar nature of uh, the idiom and how it differs from the literal or other form of words that we explained before. Um by way of concluding this is the end of the, the module one as we have mentioned we are, we look at denotation and connotation um, register and jargons puzzle verbs and then idioms um as we welcome comment and questions from you i'd like to say in the next slide in the next lecture we are to discuss basic grammar, which is our module two, God willing. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for the time and the attention. We welcome you or we welcome, as I welcome question and observation. I wish you a happy stay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.